That reminds me of a story I read in the New York Times many years ago about a school where the, the highest needs children. So these are kids with one-to-one, -one, two to one kind of level of service need were in a, a special school that that you know was for kids like that but they were using a more democratic process to run the school to to help the kids with their you know to with their day-to-day -day activities and so so because it was democratic they were you know being more not so directive but more sort of okay how are we going to be now one of the things that that they had to, you know, just state requirements is you have to do fire drills occasionally. And they had a, a setup where there was a very loud bell. And so there was one child in particular who sounds were an issue, you know, and the huh? fire alarm was a big issue. And so he was volatile and they, they knew it was coming and they, you know, well, eventually they, they, you know, were, had the, the periodic freakouts and then eventually they, they started to have a more of a conversation with him and they decided to, they, they told him he was responsible for making sure everyone got out of the building. They gave him a job and that was in the, what enabled him to shift the focus from this loud sound to, I have a job to do. And my, you know, my friends are, are counting on me for this. Mm -hmm. And and it completely transformed his reaction. It doesn't mean he wasn't, you know, bothered, but by giving him focus and giving him monthly opportunities to practice that focus, yep. it really uh, transformed his ability to to function um, and yeah. and to find ways. And so it, it it's exactly the point you're making is that mm -hmm. that there isn't. Uh, a, a more important challenge in a human life of all ages is to be the master of your own attention. Mm -hmm. We were, you know, there's a huge thing right now about all the screens, which is a question I didn't ask you about, but <laughs> mm -hmm. I usually do. But, but there's this huge thing right now, and there's a different response in the mainstream versus in schools that are focused on agency rather than academics. I mean, it doesn't mean academics is gone, but it means, you know, agency is the real focus. And that's how I, you know, why I invited an active academy operator yeah. on here, because I believe that's what you're up to. Um, and, and so everybody in the world uh, who has access to a screen may be struggling with it. But at the schools where agency is the real focus, it's not a question of, ban or not ban it may not even be a question of how to regulate it it's a question of asking the children do you want to regulate it how should we regulate it if we're going to do that and i've gotten a variety of responses throughout you know i've this is my second season and you'll be episode 14 the conclusion of the second season and 16 episodes in the first season so that's uh, 30 episodes <laughs> and i i don't ask every time but 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 it's Sometimes there may be limitations and sometimes there aren't. But what's consistent, and I think that's most important, is that the adults in the space are willing to have the conversation about it. Yes. And the focus is, if we use these tools, what's the impact we have? And what's the impact not just, are we learning better? That's not the mm -hmm. question. The question is, how is it serving us? Is it supporting our well-being? Are, are we are we maintaining our friendships and our connections and our passion and our interests? That's the real question that I see uh, coming through. And, and, and even even, you know, just describing how one child neurodiverse has challenges, but can then be a help and be the, the conduit for bringing calm into an environment, into to a companion who's panicking. I mean, that's that's what it's really about is is creating those moments of community and connection independent of you know what 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 their challenges are what the challenges they're facing so right yeah i we could do another episode on, <laughs> on technology but yes you are right with that yeah, yes yeah. I, I i agree <laughs> 
This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs, so that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.